Ever since its first announcement at E3 in 2016, I was extremely hyped to see the newly formed Kojima Productions first game release. Prior to Kojima leaving Konami, I had been a huge fan of Metal Gear Solid franchise and especially the partially unfinished title The Phantom Pain, an immensely engaging and expansive open world game. So needless to say I was eagerly awaiting Kojima's new game and what it might offer. After seeing the cryptid and mysterious release trailer for Death Stranding and following the online hype train, I waited for years for the day it would finally be released. Before I get to my opinion of the game, I will attempt to give a brief synopsis of the story. It's very complicated, so bear with me. It might not be so brief. This is a chunky game and I may make a follow-up video on specific ideas or subjects of interest in the game. There is a lot to go through. The story. In the future, mysterious explosions have rocked the planet, setting off a series of supernatural events known as the Death Stranding. With spectral creatures plaguing the landscape and the planet on the verge of mass extinction, it is up to Sam to journey across the ravaged wasteland and save mankind from extinction. At the start of the game, the story puts you in the shoes of Sam Porter Bridges, a freelance delivery man. Delivery men or porters have become famous for delivering essential supplies through the world since the cataclysmic event known as the Death Stranding happened. This event started when beach things, known as BTs, returned from the afterlife. These invisible ghost remnants returned from limbo, in this game it is known as the beach. BTs cause explosions, known as void outs, when they consume the dead by necrosis and produce rain known as timefall that rapidly ages and deteriorates whatever it hits. These events damage the country's infrastructure, leading to its remaining population to confine themselves to remote colonies known as not cities, which form the remaining United Cities of America, or UCA for short. Companies such as Bridges and Fragile, whose porters brave BTs, bandits and terrorists to deliver supplies to cities. With the use of a bridge baby, known as a BB, a premature child reflecting in a state between life and death, through which it is possible for a person to sense the presence of a BT. Porters carry a BB with them, which is stored in a pod simulating a mother's womb. Since the cataclysm, a condition known as dooms appears in few living people. Depending on its severity, it allows a person to naturally sense, see or even control a BT, as well as granting a variety of powers such as teleportation or travel to other people's beaches. There are also individuals known as repatriates who can travel back from the seam, a place between worlds of the living and the beach upon death. As such, these individuals can effectively return from death, though their deaths will still cause void outs if killed during contact with a BT. Sam is convinced by his mother and president of UCA, Bridget, to rescue his sister, Amelie as she has been held captive by terrorists known as Homo Daemons in Edgenot City. Homo Daemons aka terrorists are the decentralized group of militant separatists. They seek to maintain the independence of Edgenot City. Bridget attempts to convince Sam to continue in MLA's footsteps on the wasteland expedition to reconnect America, but in vain, as Sam shows no interest in America's future. In her dying moments, Bridget lunges from her sickbed onto Sam, establishing a contract with him, binding him to the task of embarking west. Carillium is the crystallization of chiral matter from the beach. Carillium is present through the atmosphere of the planet as a result of the Death Stranding, and responsible for the meteorological event known as Timefall. Sam has been tasked with connecting all of America together under the chiral network which uses the beaches, connecting everyone together as a form of transmitting information instantaneously, similar to the internet. Before he sets out, he is fitted with a standard issue bridges delivery gear and given a Cupid to connect thermal, terminal knots to the chiral network. A Cupid is a necklace that contains high amounts of Carillium, which bears a series of tag engraved physics equations containing all the necessary security and operational po protocols to integrate a terminal location into the chiral network. All establishing strand points are accessible to those bearing the required equations. He also eventually gets equipped with cufflinks. Cufflinks are wearable computer in the form of handcuffs worn by members of bridges. They act as health monitors for wearers as the color of the light they emit changes based on the wearer's status. 
people. As you journey across the entirety of America, connecting small outposts and larger distribution centers into the Kyle network, you meet a variety of friends and characters which advise and explain the story to you through mass exposition dumped throughout the gameplay. I will go through them quickly now. Fragile. Owner of Fragile Express, she and Sam meet at the beginning of the story. Fragile possesses dooms with an extinction factor that is higher than Sam, allowing her to see BTs. Fragile's dooms allows her to teleport to other locations in the world by moving through her beach and reappearing in the material world. Deadman. He appears to be involved in the medical field for bridges. He is an artificial human created from a combination of cadavers and stem cells. He is your main advisor throughout the gameplay and story. Die Hardman. A stoic loyal man fully dedicated to the UCA and America's reconstruction. While a large part of his motivation was devotion to and love for Bridges Strand, he acts as an advisor for Bridges' point of view and directs Sam throughout the game as well as Die Hardman. Mama and Lochne, genius twin sisters born with dooms that gave them the ability to communicate with each other across the world. Together they made half of the chiral network, Mama the hardware and Lochne the software. Hartman, uh, an extinction researcher who lost his family in a void out and nearly died during surgery at the same time. After being on a beach with his family awaiting the afterlife, the emergency generator of the hospital started and he was brought back. Now obsessed with being with his family again, every 21 minutes, an automated defibrillator on a Hartman's chest stops his heart and it restarts it three minutes later, in order for him to search his beach for his family. Higgs Monaghan Known as the man in the golden mask, was a porter and close associate of Fragile Express. Higgs ag acted as the figurehead of the military, militant separatist group known as Homo Demons to maintain the independence of Edgenaut City. Cliff Unger was the United States Army Special Forces captain who was shot dead attempting to reclaim custody of his son from Bridges. Following his death, he became beached in a restless search for his BB as the combat veteran who regularly appears to confront Sam throughout the story. Final chapters, spoilers ahead from now. After about 40, 40 plus hours of gameplay, you finally have trekked across America and successfully linked and added all cities under the Chiral Network. And Edge Not City is the last one to go in order for you to finish your mission of rescuing Emily and accomplishing your goal. Sam is eventually attacked by Higgs at the front of Edge Not City who puts Amelie under his control and manifests a colossal BT from which to combat Sam. After felling Higgs the colossal beat in colossal BT form, Sam has Fragile jump him to Amelie's beach where he engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Higgs in a tar pit, incapacitate, incapacitates the terrorist and rescues Amelie. She confirms to Sam her status as an extinction entity who is born to bring the end to the world, known as the Final Stranding. Making his way back east, Sam is swept away in another supercell as he nears Lake Knot City, wherein he battles Cl the Clifford Unger once more. No longer hostile, Clifford Unger rises to bestow his dog tags to Sam and embraces Sam as his bridge to the future, before disappearing at the sound of a gunshot. After being briefed on Fragile's worsening condition, after having excessively jumped across the beach, Sam sets out to deliver a stockpile of cryptobytes to her in Capital Nut City, defeating a Leviathan BT along the way. In Capital Nut City Isolation Ward, Fragile tells Sam what she learned from Higgs. After the terrorist's defeat, that Higgs was seduced by Amelie's extinction entity powers and made him an agent of extinction. Soon after, Fragile jumps Sam to Amelie's beach so he may attempt to talk Amelie out of initiating the last stranding. Arriving on Amelie's beach, Sam searches for Amelie until she appears to him. She reveals to him that Amelie and Bridget are merely names of two halves of the extinction entity she is. Her Ka, or soul, and Ha, body, respectively. Furthermore, she reveals that Sam, Sam's expansion of the Carl network has bound all connected to the network to her beach, thus enabling the last stranding. As this has always been her plan, she presents Sam with two choices. Watch the swift ending of the world together with her until the last flame winks out, or use Die Hardman's left behind revolver to sever his connection to her and her beach and postpone the last stranding. Sam chooses instead to embrace her, 
assume, assuring her he would always be there for her as she was there for him. Amelie reveals that this, ex this is an extinction entity. She has been fated to usher in the last stranding and that after an ag agonizingly long span of solitude on the beach, she opted to set the last stranding in motion in order to advance by utilizing the expanded Carl network as a catalyst. She chooses to remain on the beach alone to spare humanity the worst of the inevitable last stranding and in hope of providing life an opportunity to come out stronger from the extinction. After sharing one last embrace with Sam, Emily pushes him out of her beach and into his own to return to his allies. Upon returning to the world of living, Sam attends Die Hardman's presidential inauguration as the United Cities of America is form formally recognized as a nation made whole. When a decommissioning order comes through for Lou to be in incinerated, Deadman mentions that Sam may try to remove Lou from their pod to see what happens. Sam meets with Fragile, is asked if he wants to join her, and is asked if he wants to work for her UCA approved private delivery company, claiming to harbor no ties to anything or anyone. Sam expresses his continued detachment from the world of the living, in spite of the connections he has formed throughout the journey and states that there's no place for him in this newly connected America. He leaves a disheartened fragile with a parting remark that everyone, everything he touches, he loses, before sending out with Lou to the incinerator. At the incinerator west of Capital One City, Sam places his cufflinks and Lou on the incinerator table, but retrieves Lou at the last second, before the infant can be cremated alongside the cuffs. He transconnects with Lou, triggering an experience reminiscent of repatriation, where he follows a strand to join his soul with the infant carried by Cliff's chronic visions. He had since first connected with Lou, experienced the full breadth of events surrounding Cliff's death, and adult Sam is allowed to an intermission of respite with Cliff, during which Cliff acknowledges Sam My son. as his bridge to the future. My bridge who unites people together rather than divide them, and embraces his son before being shot dead, revealing Cliff to be Sam's biological father. So all this time Cliff was just searching for Sam, he wanted Sam to be happy, not to capture Sam's BB. Following the trans connections end, Sam removes Lou from their BB pod, frantically attempts to stimulate activity in the lifeless infant with a spe spectral umbilical cord forming tethered to Lou and infant BT floating above the two. A detached Sam holds Lou in his embrace. To Sam's surprise, Lou lets out a fussy cry before playfully grabbing Sam's UCA quipu. Together with Lou, Sam leaves the incinerator and cradles Lou in an ending drizzle of rain, bearing no effects of timefall, just as sunlight breaks through and an ordinary rainbow forms above them environment. The world of Death Stranding is incredible looking. You spend the majority of the game traversing this rich and diverse landscape, going from rolling green hills through snowy mountain tops. I found myself constantly looking at these incredible vistas and beautiful landscapes. The fear of a game map of this magnitude is that it would start to look all the same. This game does an incredible job of making every inch of the world look incredibly beautiful and different. The process of obtaining a package to be delivered, plotting out a travel route on the map and traversing the world using tools and ingenuity makes for interesting gameplay at the beginning. But as you improve walking tech equipment such as boots and exoskeletons, this gets a little boring, especially at the end of the game when you have to walk all the way back again. The accompanying music added much needed relief at times of triumph while walking as you neared your destination. The soundtrack and sound design of this game is fantastic. Low Roar is one of my favorite bands. Gameplay. The game is broken loosely into chapters, foc focusing on one character at a time, as Sam moves from zone to zone, slowly collecting the world together. As the player comes to terms with the story and how the world came to be this way and why. The dynamic of managing your cargo I actually really enjoyed. It makes you physically weigh what you actually need to traverse and complete your objective at the cost of ruining your weight balance. Carrying more equipment with your delivery cargo as well as weapons will affect how effectively you can travel and evade enemies 
as you climb and walk through the difficult terrain. The game is plagued with evaluation data and information dumps. I felt this impacted the gameplay and story at every possible location in the game, as you get interrupted by an evaluation screen detailing how effectively you delivered a small package and the route you took, giving you a letter grade at the end. Many times toward the end of the game, this mechanic would pause at an important cutscene or exposition dump at moments of the game and drown you with this information, making you want to continuously bash the bush and to get through it to get back into the game. It was fine seeing this data on important deliveries, but I did over 200 deliveries in this game, so I seen this screen and this information over and over, and it started to look the exact same, so I lost interest and didn't really care about it toward the end of the game. Conclusion. I've never played a game like this before. I don't think a game like this exists. I was extremely happy to finish this game and get through the slog of cutscenes at the end, but after reflecting I am sad it's over. Say what you will about the story and gameplay, but this essence of the game is the concept of death and connection with the world as well as the fragility of environment and the appreciation of life. Kojima's games are not special because they are weird and unusual, but they make you think about life and contemplate the meaning of the world. And what better way to think than go for a walk and carry a box from point A to point B? This game is not afraid to take pauses and allow the game to breathe, thus allowing the player to rest and reflect in silence. Too many games nowadays try to be a blockbuster movie. In any instance where there can be content, there should be content. Not this game. This game that allows you to breathe often, meditate on events, past, present and future as you traverse this detailed and disturbed world. This concept of walking and labour turned a lot of people off this game. But it is the heart of this game. You are going to be walking a lot. I am a big fan of Kojima and walking simulators, so I went into this game extremely hyped. After finishing the game I now realised that Kojima needed Konami to rein in his madness a little bit. The game is enjoyable, it's beautiful and atmospheric, but I can't help but feel it's unfinished. I know Kojima is trying to create a new universe here, and I hope this title acts as the training wheels at the beginning of this long journey. After walking for about 100,000 miles across America, the game ending was ultimately a little disappointing, whittled down to a reductive anticlimactic overdramatic boss fight. After defeating a giant with a hand for a head in a firefight, you travel to Amelie's beach to finally confront Higgs, the main antagonist and pain in the ass throughout the entire game. The antagonist you have been pursuing for the entirety of the game. Instead of a good and simple conclusion or subversion and mind-blowing reward for completing this arduous task, you are met with a lackluster three-part battle you cannot wait to finish. Ultimately, the battle concludes with a fist fight similar to a shabby knockoff Tekken. It's hard for me to put into words how terrible I thought this was. It's up, it's up there with season 8 of Game of Thrones. Then the game concludes and fleshes itself out more by making you walk back home through an unstable America that you spent the entire 40 plus hours getting through. The final hour of cutscenes were entertaining, but I felt this game could have been more. The mythology and lore created was great, but the character development and story were out of place at parts. After finishing the game I thought I was missing a part of the story or forgetting something. Sam's journey was great, but ultimately pointless. He started out as an outcast who wanted nothing to do with America or saving it, but in the end he ended up feeling the exact same way. After connecting the world together and saving it from total destruction, the game ends with Sam and Baby Lou together, so maybe that is the point. A person will not save the world just for the heck of it. The only reason Sam accepted this task was because he believed his sister was in danger and wanted to save her. But when he found out she wasn't real and that his real father was Cliff, who was killed by Bridget, he felt left alone in the world again. The only person Sam felt connected to that was real for him was Lou, so that is the reason he wanted to keep living another day in the end, in this world that will eventually end. I know this review comes across a little negative. This game left me thinking for days about things I know and things I was trying to find an answer to. 
That's why Kojima is a great storyteller. I would love to see what happens to these two in the future, Sam and Lou. I have high hopes for Kojima Productions. They have started a new franchise, which is fresh and fully in the hands of Kojima, which is exciting. I eagerly await the next game from Kojima Productions in the future. Hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.